ready to get rolling? Yeah. And avoid the beer cock this time. Mm-hmm. So welcome back uh, to the Rock Radio Podcast. Um, we were originally uh, we were originally untitled. Then we went to the Rock and Roll Radio Podcast. Podcast. And now we've abbreviated prod, prod <laughs> abbreviated to Rock Radio Podcast, which is very easy for anyone to remember. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you will. So we, we're uh, going to have stuff available at rockradiopodcast.com, um, brought to you by Rock and Roll Jihad, which is the studio that we're building um, in Van Nuys. And uh, Absolutely. Welcome, of, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. This is Chad. Chad Von Hayden. And I'm Ro. Ro. And I think we wanted to start this episode off with a band that we've been into this week, and he's really been obsessed and sending me stuff. And, and when, I got it, when I finally got around to listening to this band, I was blown away. And again, if you've been listening to any of the other podcasts, from Sweden, right? Yeah, absolutely. So here's uh, to whatever they're putting in the water in Sweden, right? Absolutely. Yeah, this is a, I got this from uh, the Backyard Babies. Dragon, the guitar player for Michael Monroe, I guess uh, Imperial State Electric was not able to do a show. And uh, my friend Carl, the drummer for Michael Monroe, uh, sent me a, a message letting me know that Marvel was taking the place. And uh, I checked them out. And I've been obsessed. So Marvel is uh, the new obsession this week. So uh, this is a brand new song. The new album called War Hawks of War. This is a song called Hello. Dig it. You have an eye for tragedy. Specialized in moral decay. A fascination for all things bad. Now the one I love will struggle. So, 
that was Hello. I had you at hello. That was awesome. Such man. an awesome song. Fuck it is, man. Um, we were just rocking out to it. So, um, what's happening, brother? No, nah, man. What's going on with you? It's a evening podcast, and I, I'm remembering not to have a beard cock during this episode. Shonda, thank you, Shonda. <laughs> but I'm gonna sip this before we go down. No beard cock. What else is on your playlist this week besides Marvel? Uh, for sweet and stuff, just the the, the same. Oh, no, in, general. Right. in general, in general, in general. You would laugh. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I know. I, I saw. I and I've been doing the same thing. I know you went back to some '70s stuff this week. I did. I did. Yeah. I was visiting. I'm a pop head. If anybody knows me, Ro knows me as well. I'm a very big pop head. Uh, I went back and I listened to a lot of David Cassidy this week. Believe it or not, and uh, it blows me away. Just the reason is because of the songwriting. Again, it goes back to songwriting. It's not. It doesn't matter if it's Metallica. Megadeth Slayer or or David Cassidy. Uh-huh. A good song is a good song. What are you laughing at? Because <laughs> I got something funnier than David Cassidy. Oh shit! What is it? What, what do you got? I, and my and my son came into the room going, "Why have you been listening to this song all day?" Not Justin Bieber. No, 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 okay. no. I've been listening to "Girl" by Davy Jones from the Brady Bunch performance that that's he did. actually a great song. It's an amazing song. I and love that song. I, was, I found it on YouTube. I was like, "That's like my favorite." Girl. Look what you've done to yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, I love it more than any monkey song. Um, and to me, to like something more than Daydream Believer, which is one of my favorite songs. But that was a monkey song. Was it? Yes. Okay, that I thought was it was a just a no, Davy Jones song. No, they just used it for the, the Brady Bunch episode. Oh, is, my God. So I, I played that part of that probably like four or five times before I came here today. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. I love it. Pop, yeah. dude. Anything that sticks in my head, it's just, it's a good song. That's And that's... Some people don't understand yeah. that it's not like I'm into these boy bands right, or whatever, right. which I'm not. I'm more into a good, written, structured song. Anything yeah. that sticks in my head, I'm like, okay, there's a reason it's sticking in my head. Yeah, <laughs> the strong melodies, the composition, um, the, the horn section, the organ, just everything in that song was just perfect to me. Uh, and it was just a perfect little pop song. And uh, you know, David <laughs> so Jones is a cute little guy, you know, with his ruffled shirt on, and he's doing his, and Marsh comes busting in. It's like, I just have to talk to David Jones. I, yeah. Awesome thing. Go we'll find it. Maybe we'll play it at the end of yeah. this or something. I, I don't know if that beats David Cassidy, but... <laughs> yeah, it might, it might not beat David Cassidy. I think you're right? even. That's even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the Partridge Family, I'm, I'm a sucker. I actually have yeah. like four or five Partridge Family CDs. Wow. Yeah. There were that many? There's actually more I'm, I'm, I'm missing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I watched, I watched the, uh, Partridge Family a lot and um, the Monkees growing up. And I think that was probably the start of my obsession with music and 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 storytelling. You know, um, I always say, you know, my favorite lyricists are the guys who can tell a story. And I love when it's done in a musical format um, with with images and characters. That's why I love musicals so much. You know, and I, I just love the way uh, you know. And, and rock operas, too, you know, Absolutely. like listening to Quadrophenia or something like that. Absolutely. And, and being Tommy. able, yeah, Tommy especially. Yeah. Being able to follow, like, a character through music, I think is awesome. And when they put it uh, in a movie and make the movie and, and then bring it to life, it's just that much better. Absolutely. It. Yeah, um, dig it. Oh, man, you just, uh, you lost my train of thought. What were we talking about right before that? There was something. Pop songs and, and the monkeys and Partridge Family. Wow. Do we need to go back even further? Nah, we'll, stop. We'll, rewind the tape. Nah, we'll. I'll figure it out. But okay. Yeah, there, there was some. I, was, I got into what you were saying, yeah. and I totally lost my train of thought. But we'll go back to it. I to, tend. I tend to get passionate. Oh yeah, and, I, and then I get into yeah. what you're talking. Like, Speaking of music and movies, last episode you told me I have to, have to, have to, and you gave me the movie to take home and watch. I heard you watched it, and I watched it, and I actually rec- I found uh, the link to another it. state of mind. Another state of mind. Um, social distortion. You um, forgave. And Youth Brigade. Wikipedia is sponsoring, actually sponsoring that documentary so you can watch it for free no online. That, I and, did not know that. Yeah, so I think I actually posted it um, for your friend who said, uh, I can't remember which friend of yours, but we were going back and forth, and I said, just watch this, it's great. And I posted the link, and uh, it's got Ian McKay um, and the Fugazi guys, but yeah. it was, I think it was um, actually the Minor Threat guys. Threat. It was before that, Fugazi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Youth Brigade and, and Social D. And talk about like seeing the beginnings of something, especially Social D. Yeah, I mean the rest of those guys, they did. You know, people do know who they are, but 
for someone to come out of that, Social D was huge yeah. coming out of that. Yeah. And I'm a huge Social D fan too. But yeah, just to see that young, what was he, 15? Yeah. 15 years old, 16? No tattoos. No, it's just... I don't know how many guys are in the band now that were in the band then. I don't think any of them. We, I don't think so either because think... he went to jail, right, for yeah. heroin after that. But you see his dedication even at 15 years old. He said there's a line something like, I don't care about these guys. I don't care if I have to find all new guys. I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep doing this. And I'll keep the name and I'll keep the songs. It's my name. It's my songs. And if they don't, they all go home because touring was too the tour was too hard. And so they all go home and he sticks it out he, for a few more days. But he didn't have a band, so he's out there on the road. I mean, it's a great story. It is. And then knowing how it ends now, you know, that he's of just course. this huge rock star, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He actually on the uh, there's a commentary on the new uh, you can you can watch with him talking about it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's amazing. If you can get the DVD, which I have, and I I actually look for it to right. Someone else has it right now. Okay. Otherwise, I would <laughs> lend it to. You. But uh, yeah, he, he didn't understand all that going yeah. on. He's like, wow. He goes, <laughs> yeah. he's like this is crazy. Uh, I don't understand how many people really like this, but okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very cool to see the beginnings yeah, yeah. of a scene. Um, yeah. So. So I did. I did my homework. Um, also, uh, also yeah. listened to Backyard Babies, too. Um, cool. Which I, I, I've, I don't really know. I went back and, and kind of dig it. Again, another Swedish band. And then they were the ones that kind of. If I have to, I have to think about it. They were the ones that kind of broke me into the Swedish band. There, I've been. I've been a fan of theirs longer than anyone. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Them and the Helicopters. Right. Helicopters. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's. I remember when the helicopters kind of came out and everybody was like, the helicopters. I mean, yeah. that was like... I stumbled on I never even heard of them. I stumbled on to them myself and was blown away. And then, uh, then of course, like, yeah. was, like you said, people are already into them. Not a lot of yeah. my friends are on, in America here uh -huh. because I was like, hey, man, did you ever see this band, you know, helicopters? And a lot of people were like, yeah, where you been? Right. <laughs> like, but luckily, I was working in San Diego with a band called The Classified. And uh, they turned me on to them because I was like, yeah, they're, they get that whole rocket from the crypt scene down there. Those guys, that whole San Diego rock scene. Didn't we um, open up for rock from the crypt? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, actually, no, we we were supposed to. Yes, we. Oh, no, we there was did. two shows we did, and um, it was an all rocket from the crypt ca crowd. Just, uh, just yeah, yeah, yeah that's like right. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuck. We got drunk. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so we just said fuck it, let's get drunk. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, go. No, on. yeah, yeah, but they were. They were that whole rock scene, which was like happening in San Diego at that time, like 15 years ago. They were all about the helicopters and a bunch of other bands, um, like that. And and you know, I so I was going down to San Diego a lot, and there's a few bands that I was I was tight with and, and hanging out with because their their scene was just was blowing up down there. But um, yeah, so I don't know. So anyways, <laughs> no, it's awesome. Um, the the helicopters are, are awesome. They're one of my favorite. And they may be my favorite uh, band from Sweden, and I have so many, so that's a, that's a big deal to yeah. say. Yeah. But and I actually, uh, uh, I will say, I shed tears when they broke up. I was uh -huh. extremely sad. They had uh, the last show they ever did uh, streamed live online, and I watched it. Uh -huh. And it was literally, I was on my computer like crying, watching, wow. knowing this is it, man. And I was lucky enough to see them live. They came here on the last tour. And I saw them at Del Rey. Oh, that's cool. And that was, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I've seen Black, Black Backyard Babies here three times. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, speaking of Black, what do you think of, uh, um, what is it, uh, the Black Eyed, no, that's the rap, rap band. <laughs> yeah, Black Eyed Babies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the other one, the, the two-piece, the new, the new, they're not new, they've been around like seven or eight years. Black Keys? The Black Keys. See, no, that's funny. I know the name. Don't know anything about them. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I, I, I a lot know. of people that I've I talked to since then, uh, since uh, our, our first podcast, meant, you know, Black Keys is probably a band you should talk about more. Um, like a, a, a U.S. lo-fi band that just two piece, um, bringing the rock. I didn't know much about them. I listened to some of their stuff. I knew the radio song. I don't know. I can't recall it right now. But I I heard it. The first thing that I found, it's like, oh, I've heard this on the radio before. Um, dug into their stuff. And I watched some production blogs that they had. Pretty cool. They how they pursue like vintage sounds. You know, they they go in. A, I'm still not. I, I like the music. I don't love it, but 
I really respect like what they were doing. They were like looking for the right guitars, the right amps, the right you know. I'm and about they, to they check were, them out. They were, they're, well, they're, they're, they did a pretty good job of cre recreating like high tech lo fi, you know. I'm gonna do my research and uh, and definitely check that out. Right? Yeah, I have heard their name mentioned quite a few times. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> a lot of times though, I. I do research new music just because I'm a, I'm a whore. Mm -hmm. I like I want to get as much as I can. Uh, That's why you're here. Like we were talking about earlier before yeah. we started this. Right. Uh, it was unfortunate that we both realized that we're not going to able to hear everything before we die. Yeah. It's a, and that's an unfortunate thing for me. It bums me out to think about. So I just try and listen to as much as I possibly can. Uh, Black Keys, though, I do know was not really... From what I understood, not really what I would be into. Right. But I got to research it anyway. Yeah. I'm going to listen to them. And yeah, like I said, I liked it a lot. I didn't yeah. love it. And, uh, you know, but I found it interesting. I found some blogs <clears throat> on uh, YouTube, I think, that they were, you know, about how they recreated some sounds and things like that. So I was like, oh, okay, worth checking out. Dug cool. into it. And I know they have a huge following. Oh, yeah. No, I know that. Here. I know and, that. Their name was big. And they are uh, they got a, they're supposedly an amazing live show, too, so I'll probably check Is them out. Is it just out. two guys? I think, well, I don't know about the live show, but in the oh. studio, it's two guys. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right, yeah. Cool, man. From, it may have changed, but, you know, I know that was how they started. Okay, go ahead, what? No, no, I was going to ask you just completely, like, change it. If you had something else on this no, subject, no. go ahead. No, no, no. I, I didn't. Oh. I was going to just bring up something random. Yeah, well, I am right now as well. <laughs> go. We're going to switch. We're going to switch now back to the 70s. Here we go. Um, I'm curious with you. Uh, I ask a lot of people this this question, and it usually gets heated. I, I doubt it will with <laughs> Roe, but I, I was like, uh, Bon Scott mm -hmm. or Brian Johnson? Oh, Bon Scott. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I have nothing against Brian Johnson. No, I love and Brian in Johnson fact, too. Back in Black, one of the mess, yeah. most amazing rock albums well, ever. That's okay? what makes the decision hard because of Back uh, Back in Black. You go, it might trump Brian Johnson, but not quite. Yeah. You know. And the other reason that I like that, and I know what was going on, is uh, they were in pre-production for that with Bon Scott. I mean, he was already a part of that yeah. before he died. So I mean, to me, it I'm going, been. you know what? That was a Bon Scott album because then I really hear it on how it all starts to fall. At least for me, I'm not saying it because yeah. there's a lot of people who love. Obviously, I mean they sell out. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Arena still. And, love I, and I think they're the last major rock band to hold out on iTunes. I don't know if they're on there yet, but they're not. A, they up oh, until that's true because now they got the Stones, the Beatles. Yeah, Led Zeppelin and and the I didn't even Beatle, know Zeppelin did too. Zeppelin, Beatles, right. and ACDC. I think were like. Some of the big ones that weren't yeah, on there. I know the Stones finally did. Yeah. yeah. Beatles did. It was a big deal. Beatles and Stones went on. I don't know if Led Zeppelin's on there. And ACDC is still not on iTunes. Wow. I, well, they it might have changed in the last year well, or so. But. Anyway, yeah. Man, bon Scott is my favorite. I don't know if he Eddie is. Yeah, he's my favorite frontman. Always yeah. has been. He's my favorite singer out of everybody. And my uh -huh. favorite frontman. The guy had charisma oozing out of every pore of his body. Yeah. I mean, I've read a few books on uh -huh. him and stuff, and it's just weird. He never had a bodyguard. He took care of himself. Uh -huh. Angus and them would talk about him showing up to shows like, they're worried, like, God, where is this guy? <laughs> we're, we're talking about a gig at the Whiskey yeah. where it's one of the first times here in America, uh -huh. and uh, they have no idea where he's at. Yeah. He strolls in with a girl on his arm with a fifth of vodka like <laughs> 10 minutes before they got to play. Yeah. And like, no bodyguards. I mean, the guy can take care of himself. That's rock and, and roll. Just, I mean, dude, that guy's like the best. Yeah. So I saw, yeah. all I've seen like of him was that ACDC behind the music, or I think it was, that ran for a while. Um, yeah, I think it was, I think it was a VH1 thing. It was like a behind the music thing. But I saw a documentary maybe an hour, hour and a half long and he was just, he was insane. That guy was fun. That oh, guy. absolutely. But he lived there, yeah. Yeah, uh, like for those about The Rock, <clears throat> to me, it's just like... Yeah, it, you can hear the difference there. Yeah. That's when it started. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Um, Hey, if you ever want to uh, stop by every... For the past six years, I've done a get-together, a little get-together at my house for Bon Scott. February 19th was the day he passed away, oh. and we watched Let There Be Rock. For yeah. the longest time now, that was unavailable. I had it on VHS. You know, it's funny, because Let There Be Rock is what I wanted to say, and I said that for those about The Rock, but Let There Be Rock oh. is like is is uh, 
is like my favorite Bon Scott stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. But that's the movie. Did you ever see the movie? No. Which one's the movie? Let There Be Rock. That's what I'm talking about. There's a movie called Let There Be Rock. It so was, what's For Those About to Rock? I'm going to sound like an idiot. For now. Those About to Rock was the album right after Back in Black. Oh, okay. Now, which is the one? Uh, okay, I'm getting everything mixed up. Because what was the, what's the last recording that they did before Back in Black? Highway to Hell. Okay. Yeah. Man, okay, I'm going to have to go back. I haven't listened to ACDC in a long time. But yeah, Highway to Hell stupid, came so out. Let you do they, they started the tour, Highway to Hell, and then they, they, they made a movie called Let There Be Rock, and it was basically, they filmed uh, a few shows, put it together like they do for, you know, uh, live uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, documentaries and all uh -huh. that stuff. But there's a bunch of footage, and it was actually, once it was released, he died two months later. Oh, uh, okay. This movie. Okay. And, but it's an amazing movie. They have a ton of great backstart, backstage footage okay. with them, actually. I had, uh, all my, I had my facts all mixed up, now I'm straight. So um, Let There Be Rock is the movie, because I was thinking... And an album. There's it, an album, Because was there a movie for those about to rock, too? Did they make a movie for that? Not that I know of. Okay, so but, it must but be it, Let There Be Rock that I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I mean that's the that's the only I'm assuming that's the only movie with Bon Scott, but I don't know. Yeah, with Bon I Scott, have to go yes, back and fix, yes, it is the only fix one my bon. history. Definitely. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got to go back and re uh, revisit my ACDC records. But that's a it's an amazing <laughs> show, and now it's on finally yeah. for after all these years, uh, it's on blue right now. So I'm gonna get that. This Very is, cool. It's gonna be amazing, man. All right, February nineteenth. Let there be rock on Blu-ray. We might have to just film that because we'll just have like because the reactions. Be yeah. it'll be nice, man. Yeah. I'll cry. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to know. I mean, a lot of people like I've had actually people tell me they don't know the difference. Uh huh. And that is just yeah. I don't even know the word. That's just ridiculous. Right. I'm like you don't know the difference between Brian Johnson and Bon Scott. Right. I'm like, dude, there's a world. He, of difference. Uh, Brian Johnson. As gritty as he is, is way cleaner than Bon Scott. Like, Dude, there's like this yeah. gurgle, like, <laughs> just like where you hear like addiction in his voice and, and violence and addiction. And although sex and alcohol, yeah, you hear it all in, in his those voice. voice. And with Brian Johnson, he has that stuff too, but it's 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 cleaner. cleaner. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. As, as, as weird as that is, it's true. Yeah. Um. Oh God! What was I just gonna say? Uh, <laughs> oh, holy crap! Mm. Whatever. So, what? what other stuff has been on your playlist besides seventies pop since last week? <laughs> besides David Cassidy, yeah. <laughs> Osmonds. <laughs> Sorry, All right. I got a lot of pop okay. this week. Okay, wait, wait, wait. My first concert that I ever been to was Donnie Marie. You, you jumped ahead of me. Actually, I was gonna ask you later on what like we were gonna do first concerts. Uh -huh. All right, so let's do it now. Okay, let's so do that. You're... Well, it's not my first concert. I actually, uh, my mom goes to Vegas like once a month, mm -hmm. has since I was as a kid. And back in the day at the front, we used to stay at the Frontier, and she'd get comps there, and she'd gamble, get free tickets to the shows. First show I ever went to was actually the Carpenters, dinner dinner show at, at but I fell asleep. I was five years old. Oh, okay, okay. That's, yeah. yeah. Two hundred. It was right before she died, just before she died. This would have been 1974. Um, and I think she died in '75, some somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't. I, I'm just making dates up, but it it was at some point around there. So this, I was five years old. It's like 1974, I guess. Um, and I fell asleep. I was just a little kid eating dinner. We're going to see the Carpenters. Go and see it. And um, she did. I remember she was like doing this little drum solo thing or something. <laughs> but the following year, we saw Donnie and Marie at a dinner show. There, yeah. No. Donnie way. and Marie. They did this whole stage show with. And he sang Puppy Love, and then they did like like some routines. No, I used to watch a TV show where they did. It was like it was like the TV like, show. I'm a little bit country. I'm a little bit yeah, rock and it was, roll. It was like the <laughs> stage version of the TV show, a dinner show. It was a dinner Vegas dinner show. Wow. Yeah. So that was cut. That was like the first show. Okay, forget that though. Actually, what was the first concert that you yourself went bought tickets and really wanted to go to? Okay. Um. Oh, I believe it was Magic Mountain and it was Rat and Dawkin. Rat and, and Dawkin at Mad I was fourteen or fifteen. It was at nice. Magic Mountain. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. I never got to see Rat live. Yeah. And I always wanted to. Yeah. I mean out of the cellar is one of those perfect five star yeah. fucking outs from beginning right. to end. And I, I, I wish I could have seen them. And there. it's it's funny, that same summer it's like, Oh cool, um 
drive in with with friends to to uh, to go see um to to go to to see bands like um so I think it was maybe two or three weeks later I saw Night Ranger in the, they used to just have rock concerts like at, at at Magic Mountain they used to have rock concerts like every other weekend or something well obviously Kiss yeah. meets the Phantom of the Park <laughs> right exactly yeah Magic Mountain it was filmed there in case anyone didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, that's my Ace Freely impression. I was going to say, that's a very weak Ace Freely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, I think those are, I think, like, that was, like, going for the specific purpose of seeing a band that I really wanted to see. I think th that would be it. Those, those shows right there. And that was, like, within those two shows. The Rat Rotten Dockin played together, and then a month later... Night Ranger played for Dawn Patrol. Damn. I think that's what it was. Okay, what was yours? And I saw, like, really good shows, yeah. but I wasn't out here yet for that. I, I came out to L.A. in 89, uh -huh. October 89. So, uh, you this got to been see This would have been 1986, 80, 85, yeah, or 86. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to see some good yeah. stuff. God, I'm jealous. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, actually, I'm not, not to, you know, you saw some good stuff. Right. I did as well. Only, I wish I would have saw a little more rock stuff. Uh, my very first concert was at the Rosemont Horizon. I was living in Illinois, so uh -huh. Southern Chicago. Right. Was Billy Squire open up for Foreigner. And that was badass, man. I mean, it was on Foreigner 4. So it was like the Jukebox Hero tour. I mean, that the huge blow-off uh -huh. Jukebox. It was, it was, wow. It was absolutely mind. It was, it was at that show, you know, I was this young kid. Like, I was freaked out. You know, I smelled pot for the first time. All this stuff going wow. on. I think there was a guy doing heroin right in front of me, and there's a you know, and people were trying to. Yeah, they're, they're, it was weird. Uh, yeah, my, the guys that were around me they were older kids. Uh -huh. I always hung out with older. That's how uh -huh. I got into a lot of the uh -huh. music. But they were trying to protect me and keep me away from all this stuff. But you couldn't get away from the smell of marijuana. <laughs> it was great. Wow. But yeah, Billy Squire was my very first, like, on stage watching. My like, oh my god. So I mean, he's always going to cool. be a part of me. And it yeah. was on his Don't Say No album, which uh -huh. is the biggest album. And like two months later, he got kicked off the tour. Not because he did anything wrong, because right. he was so huge. At that point, with The Stroke, My Kind of Lover, Lonely is the Night, all on the same album, man, you know? And so he, he got huge. Wow. Up. But I saw them together, and it was amazing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's, was, that's, a bit, that's, a, that's a big one. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, the first time I smelled pot, too, was at, that, at Magic Mountain. But um, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we went for that, and, and then I can't remember. Uh, so we'd go back for 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 different shows um, all the time, me and some high school friends. But I don't know if it came before or after. I went to a Billy Joel show. Oh, gee. Um, with my cousins, and it was I don't know what if it was before or after the rat th the rat docking show. Is what when year? it was when oh for the longest time. Oh, that's Uptown Girl stuff. That's yeah. uh Oh God, what album is that, man? Eighties, right? Eight, that, yeah, I'm a huge Billy Joel fan. The Nylon Curtain. That so that would have been like eighty three. Maybe that was before that. I might have. But it wasn't. I went because my cousins were going. They had a ticket. I was. Hey, you want to come with us to Billy Joel? And um. And so it, you know, it probably doesn't stick in my head as much as man. I want to go to. Go to Magic Mountain to see, ride some rides, and then go see uh, Rat and Dawkin. And we had we did this thing where we went with a group of people, w waiting in line because it was general admission. Wait in line at the amphitheater, go ride, go ride on rides, come back so my other two friends could go, you know, ride in. Uh, I think it was my cousin, uh, a couple of cousins. They can go ride the rides and then come back, and we just did that all day long, you know, just alternating just to get back in. Yeah. But that was your like, I mean, you yeah. wanted to see that the was band, like, right? yeah, that was I mean, like, you were like going for the. Let's go to Magic Mountain and see Rat and Dawkin. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. yeah, I wish I could have saw. I mean, I wish I could saw them in general, but you got to see them at the like beginning. Like, yeah. the really great stuff. Yeah, it was before Out of the Cellar. Yeah, it would have been uh, right like at the release of Out of the Cellar. Cellar. Yeah, it had to be because they like, only had an EP before that, right? The, but the, they were playing around LA all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was before. It wasn't before Out of the Cellar. It was before Round and Round blew up. Gotcha. That's when it was. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Um, wow. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was a good one. I hate you. 
<laughs> and by H, I've jealous. never, I've never <laughs> seen, I've never seen Billy Squire though, and I, and that was one of my faves too, growing up in high school. Yeah, and I, and, and I'm lucky enough to get to see him on, on that tour uh-huh. because that tour, I mean, even the next album was pretty good, but I could already tell it wasn't as good as Don't Say No. Album. Right. And I got to see him on that, and that was just phenomenal. That's pretty. But cool. my second one, right after that, I went and saw Sammy Hagar on the Standing Hampton tour, which was actually, I think, that's the pinnacle of Sammy Hagar. Yeah. And Aldo Nova opened up. Oh, wow. First album. Yeah, I mean, I was just, like, blown away, man. Wow, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I just I just saw him recently. Just wondered, where the uh-huh. hell is Aldo Nova these days? He just came back. He was hitting, actually, for a while, writing for other people. And he just came out and started playing again. Wow. In Canada, where he's from. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. But yeah, didn't look bad, and he's actually sounding pretty damn good. Nice. Aldo Nova. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember... I, I just remembered life is just a fantasy. I never really was never an Aldo Nova fan. But, oh yeah, I was. Yeah. I loved that first album. I just remember it. I, I just remember like, oh wait, he had some relationship with John Bon Jovi. Like later, later. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he was he wasn't on my radar back then. But, From uh, what I read, yeah, he, he himself said after the second album, he became he got a big head and lost everything. He did. Oh, it all. he did. Yeah, he drugged out did the did the booze awesome. tour. <laughs> And then, and then pretty much just lost, lost it all. And then they, you know, stumbled into Bon Jovi, and they made Twitch. And uh, of course, that all sucked. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Yeah, um, concerts, concerts, lots of lots of concerts after that. Speaking of, well. did you get tickets for Darkness? No, I didn't. Is okay. it sold out? I don't know. Look into it. What What's the date of the show? That is. It's funny. Uh, February something. February eighteenth, okay. twentieth. Oh, it was right around the Bon Scott party. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. right around that. All right, yeah. all right. Okay, then um, I'll remind me when I leave here. Go home. Go. Yeah, get I would love. To, and... I'd love to go with that yeah. with you. I Who think are you going you... with? Yeah. Uh, my bass player from Licks. Actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. And is he playing in other bands right now? Huh? Yeah. Because aren't you guys? Oh yeah. Oh wait, He's... you're doing a re-release of the Licks stuff, right? Yeah, we're actually. Can yeah. we talk about that? Um. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, my friend Patrick White, who is actually the A and R guy for F and A Records, he's the one who uh, contacted me and wanted to re-release a couple of my old bands, the glam stuff. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, anyway, he uh, Patrick is in a few other bands. There's an old band, seventies band called the Records, and I guess they were influential on a lot of pop bands. Uh-huh. And he's bass player for them right now. They're opening up for Bangles. And, Doing stuff, so cool. He's doing, he's doing a really, and not only that, but he's in another band which I would love to promote for him. It's called Sitcom Neighbor, and uh-huh. they're an amazing pop band. Amazing. Do they have something uh, we could play? Oh, absolutely. Show? Yeah. All right. Absolutely. They have like a video. Or they anything? don't have a video, but you could. You, we yeah, can just I, do a little. Yeah, something. yeah, easily. All right. Maybe we'll throw something them. up for them on this podcast or the next. No, no. Wait till next because they're got a brand new album coming out, which okay. is better than the first. All so right. We'll, we'll wait till that comes off, which is going to be any time now. So. All right. All right. So uh, what uh, rock and roll books are have you do- have, have you dove into any rock books lately? Uh, you know, let's see, I haven't actually. Well, the Butch Walker book, which we already right. talked about, but uh, no, I haven't. Uh, now, and you, now, did you finish the book Butch Walker thing? Oh, I I, I I finished that in two days. I was, yeah. just, it was, you know, it's not like it's a Bible or anything. Yeah, but yeah. man, it's, but you it's, said it was a really it's good. It's so good, I couldn't mm-hmm. put it down. It I just really picked good. up the. It's not rock, but you know, I I have the um. The Miles Davis uh, book, which oh, is supposed I... to be really good. My buddy Nick just read it. He gave it to me. It's sitting on. Uh, I just finished the book I was reading, which is fantasy dragon books and stuff. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, we, we don't need to get into my nerdy right. stuff. But yeah, so that's next up. So I'll, I'm going to jump into that book next. Cool. Which is, and I mean, I've talked to two people that have read it. Um, that have said that it's just it, it's a crazy story. I read and like I think we talked before. I read anything. It doesn't matter yeah. if I, if I'm really into it. Or not. I'm just a sucker for biographies right. because I like to know where people came from. You, you and, know which is a good one too. Uh, speaking of that, I heard the Sinatra book was great too. Oh, I'd love to read. I love Sinatra though, yeah. so I would love to read that. I yeah, so yeah, but biographies. I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, yeah. no, no. But like, still another one. I would. I, I don't know if we talked about that was. Uh, a Cure for Gravity, which is Joe Jackson's biography. Oh, cool. That is, yeah, but it's not what you, it's uh-huh. it's very intense. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, he, yeah. He talks about circumcision. Oh. And yeah. It's, and, a, it's like uh, the Brian Wilson book where he talks right. about how his dad abused the shit out of him and stuff like that. 
He says this is hardcore because yeah. he didn't get circumcised until he was in his teens. That's not something you do. It's like, yeah. and it's yeah, it gets pretty heavy. But it, it's an amazing book. You just don't think of Joe Jackson that 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 way. Oh but man, yeah, it's crazy. You just brought back really bad memories because I uh, I got circumcised not in my teens, but uh, I remember my circumcision. Oh shit. Yeah, so we don't need to talk about that either because it was gross. But I had an infection, so they had to. I didn't. I wasn't. That's circumcised. what and they talk about. And, yeah. then, wow. and then I was like nine or maybe eight or nine. And there was re- something in common with Joe Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> and I remember it vividly, and it was painful and a bad memory. And yeah. Yeah, but you know, if we ever meet Joe Jackson, you have something in common. Yeah, we have <laughs> nice, pretty <laughs> shaved dicks now. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk about your. You know. Hey, you remember your circumcision? Let me so tell you. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh my god. Ooh. Let's change this. Okay. Subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. How do we go? <laughs> you go to you go to Amoeba Records this week? No. No. The only, you know what? I can't go to Amoeba Records. Yeah. Only like once a year, and I'm not kidding because I cannot go in that store without spending. Two to three hundred dollars. <laughs> That's the truth. I yeah. come home with a bag of LPs, yeah. albums, because yeah. of, we talked about my obsession and uh, my hobby, which is an obsession of finding old seventies and eighties right. bands to put on to my iTunes. And uh, yeah, I come across the, uh, your your table uh, turntable. Is that um, is it uh, USB? Can you like make MP3s off it, or how do you how do you burn no, it to CD? No, I actually have a CD player, and uh, I don't want to get all to the boring technology yeah. of it all. But it's yeah, I just take a I take an album, record it to a CD, and there are there is new technology that it could make my life a whole lot easier. Right, I just don't have the money right yeah. now. But yeah, so for now, I just I put it to a CD, put the CD in my computer, well, we'll, uh... and then I. I well, you know, once we get some sponsors going, and, and we need to we need to do that kind of stuff more frequently, it'll be on the wish list. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> and not only that, we'll, ask, I... we'll ask people to donate things to us. But <laughs> oh, by the way, we we do we did pick up our first sponsor, and it's it we're not I'm not going to say who it is yet. We're still working out a few things, but but uh, we got a location um, that's very cool, a, a rock and roll location. Um, for free, and um, so we'll 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 release that information later. And if you are, I, I know a lot of people are going to be listening to this, hopefully on iTunes. Uh, if you are watching, and because you're into visual, the only reason we are at my little place is because just mm-hmm. I'll just let you know I'm I'm a little under the weather, and I'm going through something now that's going to keep me here just for the next couple of months. After that, I'm free, and yeah, uh, yeah I cannot wait. To go. He, he already told me about this place that we uh, prepared. We actually have a couple of locations that we're going to start shooting in, and um, you know, but we're we're not doing uh, too much without Chad until he he's more on his feet. But we're building a studio, um, rock and roll, uh, rock and roll jihad studios. Um, we start we start building it out next week, and um, we'll have multi. That's when we're going to switch to the multicam format, <clears throat> and hopefully go live a uh, live broadcast. Um, multicam. Yeah, can you get my like crotch? Yeah, absolutely. Fucking awesome. Yeah, man. You, we can have an under the table cam. Um, you know, I'm hoping to have uh, a stripper cam or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll work it out. That way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, and then, then we'll be able to uh, more comfortably bring in guests. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like but we're and, gonna bring in guests. And, you here know, too. yeah, we're gonna try and squeeze them in here. We uh, definitely are. We have a couple of people in the probably in the next episode or two. Yeah. we're definitely gonna have someone. Just to like up the ante, exactly, with it. and uh, they're gonna be bizarre. Which so, is good. <laughs> uh, we, we've talked about a few things. You want to drop it? Did you have another video, another playlist thing we want you want to drop in right now? Um, Anything that'll tie up what we this last half hour? No, but what I'll do is, <laughs> I think you had. I don't know if you had trouble with it, but I would love to to play video if unless I take it off. Super, okay, super drag. But if, if we can't do super drag, well, we played sucked out at the. The ends, like uh, credits, if you will, of the last episode, we I, I threw uh, sucked out, but YouTube wouldn't allow let us upload that. Um, so which one did you have? Maybe we can. May, which one were you thinking of dropping in? Oh, my my favorite Super Drag song. Well, you know what? Fuck. Why don't we do something more obscure? How about In the Land of Dying Stars? Ooh, I like. It. 
I mean, that's like, not one. Everybody knows that. That's a, yeah. and, it, and that's a great fucking and then the audio, man song. The uh, audio version, we're, we're not going to get any shit for, so we can drop it. And you know what? Yeah, because they didn't do a video for that. We're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, reach out to to John Davis by email, um, and uh, see if we can get him to answer a few questions for us too. Oh, that um, would be amazing. Because he's responded in the past. I don't know, you know, how often he does that. But um, I mean, you know, this is how I am to John yeah, Davis. Yeah. I mean, I bowed down. I kiss yeah. his feet. That guy's fucking. Keeping quiet and meaningless In the cage that you gave me And John Davis and Super Drag in general. And that's uh, because we're both. I mean, I, so. I can I can fair easily say that you are also a yeah. very big pop head. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, I mean as easily. much as we love metal yeah. and punk, no, yeah. like, we are pop. I was heads. listening to really heavy shit today, but before the uh, monkeys. Um, but <laughs> before <laughs> me, David Cassidy, before him and the monkeys. But How my wonderful. thing is, I love pop. Songs. Absolutely, I love pop songs and like Joe Jackson, and, and I love these writers that uh, are. Yeah, and and he's not even really a like poppy, but um. Oh, he was. He was. Yeah, yeah, he was. But stuff like that, like I and I love 
what quote unquote radio pop, you know. I love anything hooky and simple and and catchy. And you know why? Because it's uh, it's not as easy to write as right. people think. Well, here's the that thing. is like exact, I, I'm exactly. I'm impressed. Exactly. With and you know what? It is like when you go to a live show. It's easy to be dark and bring everybody into you when you're being dark. It's a lot harder to bring everybody up, in my opinion. I'm more impressed with a band that shows up and gets everybody happy, everybody jumping, everybody having a good time, everybody wants to drink, and leaves on fire going, that was the best. I've been to a lot of shows that aren't designed that way, and they, they were effective nonetheless. They're, they're, just, they're just as talented but they go the other way. I just think it's harder to bring an audience up. Absolutely. You know? So you know what, bro? <clears throat> Speaking of, forget Super Dragon. Just in case, just in case you yeah. can't. I'll tell you one. You might already know it, uh -huh. and if you don't, you're gonna love this. Uh, I was very saddened to find out that one of my favorite pop artists committed suicide okay. this year. His name was Owsley. Have you ever heard of no. Owsley? I went to see Fountains of Wayne open. Uh, a play at the Roxy, mm -hmm. uh, the Troubadour. I'm sorry, the Troubadour. Another great pop band. Yeah, another great, absolutely. Yeah, another great pop band. Well, Owsley opened up for him and blew Fountains of Wayne away. I mean, he was absolutely amazing. Uh, and right now, I'm gonna have broke put it on, but uh, oh no, the radio, right here. Come on!
had a game you wanted to try. Oh, yeah, you ready? Yeah, Here. lay it on me. I'm, I'm bad at this stuff, but I'm going to give it a shot. That'll make it's it all okay. the more funny. This is my... Uh... Oh, don't reach there. Here, ready? Is it... Okay. It's time for LSD. All right. Okay. LSD is lyrics spoken dramatically. Oh, yeah. Okay. Basically, I'm going to... I'm going to take a verse, a chorus, or whatever from a very famous, or maybe not so famous, but just something that uh, I'm gonna. Be, this one's gonna be famous, just so to get you, you know, get your little lips wet here. And I'm gonna see if Ro can grab this, if he can get it. Okay. If not, we'll see if you can out there. Just call in, call in, write in, whatever. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. This is the first episode of LSD lyrics spoken dramatic. It was a Monday, a day like any other day. I left the small town for the apple and decay. It was my destiny, what I needed to do. They were telling me, I'm telling you. There we go. <laughs> from the first from the first word, I I had, like I knew you were gonna stump me because I it was already going. You know this one. But it's in the back of your head. Oh yeah, you don't. I, I know, know for, a fact, I know for you, a fact that I know this. Yeah, I, I know you've heard the song. That's but not even a. a it's. I know for issue. a fact that I know this, but you fu you're fucking with me right now. <laughs> That's um, the point, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to fuck with everybody. Um, all you people who like the you the Google and shit, fuck oh. you. I mean, if you if you don't know it, oh. then you know, say you don't know it. I, I do have a problem with people googling oh. us and acting like they know all this shit oh. because I'm not one. If I don't know it, I will tell you I don't know it. But uh, I know for a fact. Do, 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 I'm not gonna get it. I no. know for a fact that I know this right. one. The end of this uh, episode, I will. Uh, I don't know. Should I? Should, show should we? Should we let people like maybe comment and come up with the answer? Absolutely. Okay. I would love to see who can come up with first one to comment with the right answer wins. We'll see if it pops into my head by the end of this episode. And you'll get it. And a, if it does, I'm gonna whisper it to him, and I'm not gonna say it out loud. And you know what? First person to get it right, I'll give you. I will send you a gift. I'm not telling you what it is, but I'll, I'll send you something. All right. All right. Here we go. That's LSD. It. And that was graphic. LSD. All right. <laughs> Excellent, man. Ah. That was fun. Absolutely. How are we doing on time? And this 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 goes by fast. This Shut goes up. really fast. I, I have what is we're, it? We've already we're we're already uh, almost fifty minutes into the show. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Damn. What, what do we got for our last segment here? Uh oh, we were talking about Marvel. Okay. Uh oh yeah, let's bring it back around. Marvel. Yeah. Just well, just just Sweden band. And you know what? I'm not gonna harp on this all the time, though it will come up, you know, quite often because. It's just it's just great rock and roll, and that's what this is all about. I just want to like get people into some new rock and roll that we're not yeah. we're not able to get here. So unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, it's coming from Sweden. So you probably hear that name a lot. Uh, if you don't like it, fuck you. A lot, yeah. and a <laughs> lot of a lot of stuff uh, in the this last uh, few episodes, and probably the next one too, is coming from Sweden. We're just digging that scene right now, yeah. and we're kind of hard up on that scene. So. And, and again, I think Roe had mentioned last time, if you know any any American bands that are putting out great you know, rock and roll, please send them our way, and I would be gladly put out their music on a, on a video here or something. Yeah, like and so what did you think about uh, Dag Nasty? Oh, I love Dag Nasty. Nice. Thank you for that. I yeah, got yeah. to thank, thank Roe for that. I was so impressed. And uh, I, I, I was blown away that I'd never heard of Dag Nasty. But, I mean, when I say blown away, it's just blown yeah. away because it, it was something that I was like really, I didn't expect it to love it that much. It was really good. It reminded me of a couple of things, like I said. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they were, they were big at their time. They, they, had, um, um, they had a huge following, at least here in Southern California. They had a huge following at the time. They I were, somehow missed that. Yeah. They remind me of the Doughboys. Yeah, but that's another. And thing. you turned me on to the Doughboys. I don't know if you uh, if we got room. Maybe on maybe we'll open the next podcast with it or sure. If we have room sure. in this one, the Doughboys rocked me. I fucking dig the Doughboys. Now, th now, did you when I said did you know of them before? Ever I had known name? that name. I had known that name. I okay. I just but I had never seen this. The first video I clicked on, it might have been the one you sent me. Shine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The first one I clicked on, I, I had never heard the song, and I was like, Doughboys, Doughboys, I, I know that. But I watched it, and I was like, fuck. 
Well, I don't. I'm not. If I ever knew them, I never appreciated them like I, I'm appreciating oh, them now. They, yeah, and I watched like three away. three videos in a row on YouTube. But that's what like, that this... nasty reminds me. Yeah. So I'm de- it, what it did basically. What I'm trying to say is it makes me want to dig into yeah. Dag Nasty's uh, past. Right, right. I'm definitely going to be... And now, are they done? Is Dag Nasty done? Um, they were done. They, they they definitely were done for a long time. And I'm not sure if they they came back after... I think they tried to do something in the 90s, and I don't know if they've, if they've tried anything ever since. And I don't know what other bands that they scattered off into, but they did scatter off into... Other bands and okay. that trivia is like thirty years old. It's so I'm weird. Not how, like, it's weird how like a lot yeah. of bands, uh, which will probably be another discussion later, bands who put out one great album and disband. Yeah, I mean germs, you know. It's, so they have to say, boom, they're right. here and they're gone. What was um what uh what was the um Stiv Bader's movie? Um, uh, He's had a couple actually. No, no, not not the 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 docu- the the not the documentary, but the movie that they made about his life. Um, the Hollywood movie. Um. Uh, as I far just, as I know, they've never made a movie about him. What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Roll. Okay, maybe maybe I'm getting it wrong, but I, I was going to ask you if you've seen it. I was going to try and find it. So maybe it doesn't exist. I don't think so. They, I mean, did they I, ever write okay, a script? I'm a huge Stiv Bader's fan. Okay. I mean, it's huge. A Dead Boys fan. And, right. I, and as far as I know, they've never made a documentary or a movie. Okay. I, was, I, mean, I was thinking about it on the way in. I was like thinking of like uh, colorful... colorful Rock and roll personalities that that I would love to see like recreations. He's the only one. <laughs> and, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I, mean, exactly. I don't know if we're gonna get a Hollywood movie about Gigi Allen, but we could definitely get one for 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 Baders. But um, I, another, for some reason, role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, it was sticking in my head. Yeah, they made one. I gotta ask Chad if he's ever seen it. I'm pretty sure they made one. And I was just driving on the way in here, and that and it just. I'm gonna to say I'm you. pretty 85 to 90 percent sure they've never done anything on him. But okay. Uh, I have been known to be wrong. Yeah. Not very often, but <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, okay. I got a. I, I did a lot of learning in this. I got all my ACDC facts wrong. Um, you, stumped, <laughs> you stumped me with uh, with the LSD this week, um, and uh, now I've just made up a. I completely made up a movie that doesn't exist. I wish did. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Absolutely. Okay. Well. Um, we're going to close this out with some music. Um, is there anything else you want to bring up before we end this podcast? No. Why don't you take them out with some helicopters, man? Do it. Fucking A. Okay, thank you for watching. This is Chad Von Hayden. And I'm Rose Sahibi, the Rock Radio Podcast, brought to you by Rock and Roll Jihad. Stay tuned uh, for the helicopters. And um, please, please, please send feedback and questions and uh you know? And go to iTunes and subscribe. That's 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 yeah. like the important thing for us right now. If you enjoy we, it, please let us know. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to hear from you. Thanks. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Cool. Boba on the piano.